guys, welcome to Bobcat Sports Talk. I'm Jessica Carter, here with sophomore Jay Riley and sophomore Trey Howard. So congrats to Jones Bobcats. They took a win 31-10 to against Southwest. They're now ranked number six by the NJCAA. So last week, I guess you could call it Upset Saturday. We're going to have a lot more bandwagon fans. We had Missouri beat Florida. Ole Miss dominated LSU. Tennessee beat South Carolina. Vandy takes on a win against Georgia. Auburn beats Texas A&M. Central Florida takes a win against Louisville. And Florida State dominates Clemson. Guys, what are you, can you wrap your brain around all these upsets in one week? I mean, this is this is so unreal to me to look at this list. There's so many upsets. Um, you look at you look at uh, Clemson getting beat by uh, Florida State. Jameis Winston going out there making himself a real Heisman candidate. You know, calling famous Jameis now. I'm sick of people saying, "Oh, he's really not that great. He's a freshman quarterback." Blah 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 blah. blah all this stuff. I called it earlier this season that he was going to be in the top five uh, Heisman candidate uh, running, and there he is now. I think he's the number one. Uh, I think we should look at him as number one right now. I mean, uh, Oregon, Marcus Mariota. Who have they played? Nobody. Uh, you actually look at Jameis Winston. He's played a number three ranked uh, Clemson team, beat him 51 to 14. That's why I've got him as my husband favorite. Now, if you look at um, the other teams this week, you got Vandy. Vandy played uh, Georgia. Georgia, you know, missed some five starters, went out there, lost the game. Aaron Murray, supposed to be this great quarterback, and he just didn't really show it. I think that he's a good quarterback, but I don't think he's a great quarterback. I think that he's in the A.J. McCarron uh, class with, you know, good quarterbacks, not superstars. I think he superstars. has good times. Yeah. I, th- I think he has good times. I don't think he ha- he's always on. Uh, Zach Mettenberger is another one that I think is a good quarterback, not a great quarterback. Um you look at the Ole Miss game, also referring to Zach Mettenberger. You look at the Ole Miss game. They went out there and they beat they beat LSU. I couldn't believe the way that they beat LSU. I thought LSU had more to show. Um, but LSU, you know, Zach Mettenberger, you throw three picks, what can you do? But they stayed in the game even though – They take away your run. You, they, they, they took away they, the run. They, they made they took you, away the run. They tried to make Mettenberger win, and he just didn't answer the bill. They did. They did that. But you look at LSU and you look at uh, you look at what Zach Mettenberger has done the rest of the season except for that game – and even though he threw those three picks and had, you know, not really great game at all, you look at that game, and he's never thrown three picks in a game before. But you look at that game, and you say, okay, Zach Manberger, what happened here? But they still only won by a field goal, talking about Ole Miss. They only won by one field goal. So all these upsets that have happened have been phenomenal, and it's honestly, it's a better game now that we've got teams that are getting upset because it's like, Oh my gosh! We don't know who's going to win Keeps the national team. championship. Mm-hmm. People, it's like watch a game every week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you've got to watch a game every week. You can't just sit there and be like, okay, well, you know, as much as I love Alabama, we could have got beat by a team that was in the FBS. I mean, uh, in the FCS earlier this season. It's like, okay, what do I do now? Like, you could look at that and you could say, I got to watch this game every week to make sure, you know, to see to stay on my feet. I think it's a great thing for the NCAA, and I hope it stays that way. Well. I'm one of the people that say, wait a minute, on Jameis Winston. <laughs> this game, 51-14, I can't lie, he showed up against Clemson. Early in the season when he played Pitt, I was like, There's, he, he doesn't even have a defender guarding his <laughs> receivers. Why are you so high on him? Right. But this game, 51-14, Jameis Winston really showed up going, what, 22 for 34, 444 yards and three touchdowns in the pick. I can't I can't deny that. He played, he, he was balling. But – you gotta give his give his receivers some credit. They went and got the football. Uh, they they plucked him out of some some iffy situations like his first touchdown. He threw it. You can say he oh he put that right where it needed to be. But that guy he, he went up, contorted his body, got the ball, and came down with the awareness to stay in bounds for the touchdown. Second touchdown, Nick O'Leary, he just goes for a ten yard hitch, catches it, turns around, shows him his tail lights, takes a sixty yards for a touchdown. I mean he got. He got big help from his receivers. It's not just all about Jameis Winston and what he did. He did play great. He's now a top five candidate, but I don't have him um, number one or two in my list. I still have Marks Mariota. In my number two, I have Mike Evans out of Texas A&M. Uh, he, he, he's four touchdowns, 289 yards last game, even though they did lose. This guy, he is big time. But all these upsets, I agree. The kid is keeping me the on my toes. The reason I have famous Jameis is my number one. Is because I saw I saw the beginning of the game and I saw the the pregame inter- introduction and they showed inside the locker room and they showed the leader of Florida State. You got seniors on that team. 
And guess who's leading them? A freshman quarterback named Jameis Winston that has came out there. Their, their, their quarterback got hurt, and he got his first start this season. And the first game of the season, he has led that team ever since. And they're undefeated, and he is the main reason. Is this so much about Jameis or how well he played or about how bad Taj Boy played? Because he didn't show up. Taj Boy. <laughs> had, had, had Taj Ooh. Boy showed up, maybe we have seen a different Jameis Winston because he was just on cruise control. You know? <laughs> and what happened to the Clemson defense? So – I think it's a mixture of everything, yeah. the receivers and Jameis and the poor play of Taj Boy and Clemson. Yeah, because Clemson, it didn't look like Clemson was going to do this because, okay, they played against Georgia when Georgia had all five of their starters. They played against them whenever Georgia was dominant. You know, they were coming in and they were they just looked really dominant. And then they played Clemson and Clemson beat them. And it was like they did it with Georgia starters. Then they go out there against Florida State that doesn't have – I mean, they, I'm not going to down Florida State, but they don't have an SEC-type defense, and they're not as good, as, in my opinion, on defense as uh, as Georgia was. And it's like they just went out there. Late and, in the Yeah, just <laughs> let it go. That's it. Well, that pretty much sums up the upset Saturday. Just so many upsets, I can't even wrap my brain around. Now we're going to move on to NFL. Broncos versus the Colts last night. Manning versus Luck. And you would think... That before this game, there is no comparison. But, I mean, luck showed up. That Manning, 1916, 110 passing yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Luck, 1625, 228 passing yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Uh, what is your thoughts on this game? I know this changes the yes. Super Bowl picks, everything. MVP. The Bronco man. <laughs> My Broncos <laughs> did not deserve this, okay? <laughs> Deserve I mean, what? Deserve to lose? They did not. Okay, okay. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let me lay this out for everybody. Okay, so they lost, okay, and I have to be a little bit humble about this and say, let's take a step back. We lost the game now. We're not undefeated. The Chiefs are the only team that's undefeated. <laughs> the Chiefs. And I mentioned the Chiefs when we said How flying about? under the radar. I get one for that. The what is, Chiefs. What is, Point for Justin. What's going on? Like, me what's one, happened, you zero. What, what has happened to, to America? <laughs> because, okay, you look at Peyton Manning and you say, he went back home to Indianapolis. It's been, you know, it's, all, it's been uh, two years, I think, since he, yeah, two years since he's been back. And it was his first time to play against the Colts, and he was in his dome. He created that city. They I don't a, care what anybody says. They, the they, 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 they did. They it, did. It was, it was a thing to watch. But the comments that Jim Irsay said, and I, I'll, I'll say this because I love Peyton, and I thought Peyton was going to go out there and fight against that adversary, you know, just like, be like, okay, I'm going to prove them wrong. But something about Peyton, and I hate to admit it, as much as I love the Broncos and I love Peyton Manning, he – is not good whenever people talk about him. When people talk bad about Peyton, he always goes out and he tries. I think he overthinks it. Like he was looking at, you know, if you notice what he played last night, he threw touchdowns, yeah, okay, but in whenever he was uh, the second quarter, third quarter, it was like he didn't know he was on autopilot. He didn't know what to do. It was like he wanted to throw touchdowns, but he didn't know how to do it because he overthought the entire process. I think the comments that Jim Irsay made really set Peyton off, and they may have set him off in the wrong way because he tried winning that game, but there were opportunities that he just didn't have. And, you know, you look at four turnovers in the game, you're not going to win a game if you're turning the ball over that much in the NFL against a team like the Colts that never turned the ball over. So way to go, Colts. You, you know, it, it's great for you. I'm happy Andrew Luck is a good quarterback. He's, <laughs> next five years, he's only going to get better. But I'm, I'm going to guarantee this, and I'm going to guarantee it right now. If the Colts and the Broncos meet up again, if they meet up again any time the rest of the season in the playoffs, which is going to have to be in the playoffs because we don't have them on the rest of our schedule, if they meet up again, I guarantee the Broncos win. The game was far too close last Book night. It. You're booking it right now. I'm booking it. Booking it, and I will eat my words if they lose. <laughs> I will, I I will let you know you if they lose. I promise you, I guarantee it that the Broncos will win. It may be by a field goal, it may be by one point, hey, two WCW, points. I give it to it, you. It could be seven points, it could even be a 14 point spread. I don't know what it's going to be, but I know that the Broncos will not lose again because chances are it's going to be in the at Bronco, it's going to be at the Broncos, it's going right, to be in their stadium, it's going to be a mile high. Well. And coming into this game, you had so many things swirling around. You had Peyton Manning's return to Indianapolis. Yep. You had Jim Irsay's comments, as you said. And you had Andrew Luck's Saturday night debut. I mean, Sunday night debut, I'm sorry. 
But anyway, all these things swirling around. Like, how would this game end? Just like it did. Like I expected it to, end, to win. I get one. I, I said uh, the you, Broncos will. You did. I was supposed to say that. <laughs> one for me. Uh-huh. One, one, zero. <laughs> but anyway, it's okay. My team's He's gonna win the Super Bowl. College football, though. So we got anyway, there. Um, the Broncos coming into this game. If, if I'm a Broncos fan, after watching this, I'm in panic mode now because the Broncos had so many opportunities to run away with this game. But when you go punt, touchdown, punt, touchdown. Punt, 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 punt. <laughs> Through the first half, and then you come out with a safety. Is it Peyton Manning gets a safety? When does that happen? <laughs> so I don't think Jim Irsay's comments play into his. I think into Robert him. Mathis had a day, had a heyday, getting to sack Peyton after 14 years. He would, he never got to sack him whenever he was in Indianapolis. They, you know, if you listen to the commentary last night, they said that Peyton Manning wore a red shirt. You know, during practice. He was not allowed to be within – you could not get within two yards of Peyton or they'd, like, start screaming at you during practice. Right. He had a good day. Let's look at Peyton Manning's stats. 29 for 49, 389, three touchdowns and a pick. That's good stats, right? But for Peyton Manning, see, all year we've been seeing him just shred defenses. But last night he got hit in the mouth. And when you hit Peyton Manning in the mouth and he's, he gets antsy. He gets over anxious. That's when you see those flutter balls. That's when he starts overthrowing people. That's why he, he tries to win the game. And the reason I would be in panic mode if I was a, a Broncos, uh, Broncos fan is because this is the exact Peyton Manning you get in the playoffs. He cannot win the game by himself. Uh, nobody can win the game by himself. No, but, I was about to but say. But Peyton Manning, <laughs> when, when it's time for him and he, he's under pressure and it's time for him to step up, Peyton Manning sort of shrinks. And that's why he's 9-11 in the playoffs. So that's why I would be weary of seeing the Colts or anybody like the Colts in the playoffs. I liked, I liked, you know, I hate saying that as a fan and wanting us to be undefeated, especially not allowing the Chiefs to be the only undefeated. And they're in our division. Um, I, I liked seeing the loss. You want to know why? I think it'll motivate the Broncos. I think it was a playoff type atmosphere. It better do something to them. I think, I think this, this. that it was a playoff type atmosphere, and I think that it will help motivate them in the future. But four turnovers, tur- turnovers, like, how do you expect to come back from that? You had Ronnie Hillman fumble the ball. You had Trenton Holiday fumble the ball on the 10-yard line, uh, on Broncos' 10-yard line. They all, all the Colts had to do was scoop it up, take it in for a score. I think that the turnovers is what cost them the game. Peyton Manning's pick. You don't think it was Andrew Luck that cost them the game? Because Andrew Luck showed up to play. Andrew the- Luck showed up to play, but how many three and outs did, did the Colts have because the Broncos' defense stepped up yesterday? How many, Even how many three outs did the failed. Broncos have? The Broncos went three and out like three times in the first six possessions. Like, that, that's I not Peyton Manning. Like. I, I don't think it was Peyton Manning. Like, I think that Peyton was frustrated. Like I said, I think that, that uh, Jim Mercy's comments just really stuck fire in Peyton, and I think it was the kind of fire we didn't really want to see. Um, but like I said, book it. Book it now. But real quick, back to Luck. He was 24, 21 for uh, 38 with three passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, and the most important stat, no picks. So he played a very clean game. That's what he needed he to do to, to take this win. And Colts, great job. Broncos. He had a, a gimme touchdown, though, just like you mentioned earlier about Florida State. Uh, whenever Jameis Winston had his little gimme touchdown about 15 yards out, uh, Andrew Luck had his whenever whenever uh, Trenton Holiday fumbled the ball out of bounds right before right before uh, he he actually fumbled the ball whenever he was uh, on uh, I think it was a kick, kick return yeah punt return, like kick that. return punt return something like that and he he fumbled the ball and uh, it went out of bounds or uh, no it didn't go out of bounds stayed in bounds they got the ball and that was the end of it uh, it was a gimme touchdown for Andrew Luck so that touchdown like you know you want to talk about comparisons you want to, I, I think that was a, that was a gimme touchdown and I think that Andrew Luck I mean. If he's as good as we keep on saying, he's the number one draft pick. Heck yeah, he had to make that. So I think that it's going to be a good game if they play again. But I, I guarantee you that the Broncos will win because I think one, the loss is a motivation, and Peyton Manning does not lose revenge games. If you go and look back at his his typical revenge games in the regular you know regular season, not playoff so much, but in the regular season, his revenge games have been phenomenal. Well, I think that he's going to take he's going to take one, and he's going to he's going to put it in the playoffs. I really do. I think it's going to be time for the Broncos to come back. And I, I don't know if the Broncos are going to win the Super Bowl this season, but they're going to at least make the AFC Championship. Well, final word. Um, I know one's going to think I'm kind of crazy, but uh, Tony Romo flying under the radar. I think he is. I mean, he has the most passing yards in the NFL history. 
through 100 career starts. I think everyone should kind of put the spotlight on him for Tony a Romo has always been a good regular season quarterback. It's just the problem with the playoffs that people have with Tony Romo. Right, but I think I'm going to put him in my MVP prediction. I think well, uh, Manning is out. <laughs> I know this lights him on fire, but I think it is. What's your final word? Oh, well, we're, we're going to change that topic from, from, <laughs> from that because I don't think Manning's anywhere near out. I've got Ohio State. Ohio State Buckeyes. You play Iowa and you lose. I mean, you win 34-24. <laughs> Who else have you played this season? Like, why are you ranked so high in the BCS rankings? I mean, 19 Carolina's. straight wins. Playing who? <laughs> they could go play, like, literally, they could go play peewee teams and win the way that they win because they don't play anybody. And we keep on saying Braxton Miller is, you know, a Heisman candidate, and I'm not going to throw him out of there, but who is he playing? The defenses he's playing are not impressive. But, you know, even though, you know, I'm going to play a little devil's advocate, the SEC's defense is not what it used to be. So you can't say to send him down here and let him play SEC defenses because that would probably be just a score uh, shootout with us. But, um, I think that they need to play better defense. You, you put up Ohio State against Florida State, or you put Ohio State even against Clemson. I'd like to see what Clemson would do to Ohio State. No, you wouldn't, because it would be another 51-14. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Ohio State is not the team. I don't think that Ohio State is the team that everybody thinks that they are, or maybe not so much everybody, but the people in the North definitely think, man, Ohio State <laughs> the people is. people in the North. They do. They do. They think Ohio State is the real Those deal. Those Northerners up there. Those Northerners. Those, about football. Those, yeah. um, they only can play the teams that they're, they're put against. I mean, it's not. Well, put them against somebody that's actually ranked and has a good defense. Let's see what they do then. Call Urban Meyer and he, he, him and the AD. You talk to them, send them a strongly word to later. I'm, I'm, <laughs> glad I'm sure they'll change it. But my final word, we're going a little bit of baseball. The World Series is getting started, people. And it's the Boston Red Sox against the St. Louis Cardinals. It seems like the St. Louis Cardinals are in the World Series every year. They find a way. This is If you build a team from the ground up, a baseball team, it'll look like the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, they just have a workmanlike mentality. And Adam Wainwright has been on fire this postseason. I don't know if you noticed, but he has been doing his thing. But it's, it's something in the air in Boston. I, I don't know. At the beginning of the season, I don't think anybody thought they would win 80 games, let alone make the, the playoffs, let alone be in the World Series. So with that squad, the Boston Red Sox, I got the Red Sox winning in six games. See, as a Yankees we'll fan, okay, it is terrible Yankees. for me to see Boston playing St. Louis for the World Series. Because I've been a Yankees fan since I was a little kid, and I haven't really kept up with, with baseball as much as I should. But, oh, my God, we're not even in the playoffs, you know. And, hey, I'm a Yankees fan, too. You know, and it was just <laughs> it's, it's, to see that. Okay, it happens. But, and it's, it's like, how do you choose? Injuries, who, you know? who do you want to choose? Because you have to choose between your nemesis and you have to choose between your other nemesis. You don't like either one of them. The but I, of two evils. Yeah, and I, I had this old, I had this guy that I played baseball with that uh, we played high school baseball, and I could not stand the St. Louis Cardinals because he always was talking about how good they were. Well, you know what? They're back in the World Series. I'm sure if he ever sees this video, he's mm-hmm. gonna know my opinion. But <laughs> I got, I got Boston winning it. I, I, how many I games? Really do. I'm gonna say seven. Seven things going to seven. I think it's gonna go to seven. I really do. We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to go with Boston, too. I actually like Boston. There's a lot of unexpected teams in the, in the brackets this year in the playoffs. Um, so to wrap up this video, uh, please come out and support Jones this Saturday. It's the homecoming, of, and we're playing Northeast. Hopefully we can get our number back up in the poll again. I mean, we were number two. Yeah. Hurts to see number six, but maybe we yeah, can get back that. up there. I'll actually be um, sideline reporting that game, and it starts at 2 o'clock is when kickoff is. I think it's going to be a pretty good matchup. I'm excited to see the outcome. But um, that wraps up all our topics. There's a lot going on this week, so let's see you out next week. Thank you for joining us, though, on Bobcat Sports Talk. I'm Jessica Carter here with Jay Riley and Trey Howard.